Today we celebrate the birthday of John the Baptist. It's, uh, it's why I decided to get dressed in uh, our white vestments because it is a celebration day, a day in which we celebrate the birth of uh, perhaps the second most important person uh, in the New Testament narrative, John the Baptist, who was the last of the prophets uh, in the Old Testament, um, uh, lineage of the Old Testament, and who prepared the way for the coming of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And so today we say, Happy Birthday, John, and uh, we thank him for everything that he has done to prepare the people of Israel to receive uh, the coming Messiah. So I wanted us to have a bit of a look at the story of, of John's birth, which we get in Luke chapter 1. In fact, almost the whole of Luke chapter 1, which is 80 verses, is dedicated to the story of John's birth. Uh, there is a section in the middle about Mary and, uh, uh, and the angel appearing to her, and we get Mary's song. But the, the bulk of the chapter is about John. He is clearly um, an extremely important person in the narrative of, um, of the Gospels. And I want us to just reflect a little bit this morning on why is that? Uh, why is it that Luke decides to dedicate 80 verses of the chapter to John before he even mentions the birth of Jesus? So let's remember the story. John's parents, uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth, are really old and are childless. It seems that Mary uh, is perhaps um, unable to conceive, uh, but certainly by now, by the time the story starts, they are very old. And Zechariah is a priest. And we then read that an angel appears to Zechariah, the angel Gabriel, and tells him that Elizabeth is going to have a child. He also tells him a few important pieces of information. He, he says that you will name him John in verse 13, that there's a name that has already been ordained for him. And secondly, in verse 17, that he will go on before the Lord. Let me read you verse 17. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Quite an amazing prophecy that Zechariah receives from the angel Gabriel about the son called John, uh, who he's going to have. Zechariah is understandably a bit amazed that he and his wife shall now have a baby in their old age, and despite the fact that she's been unable to conceive, and you know the story as a result uh, Gabriel is a bit offended. He strikes him dumb and says that he will not be able to speak again until later. Zechariah is still at the temple, so he's actually separated from Elizabeth. But eventually, sometime later, he goes back home. And Elizabeth, of course, does conceive. And then we have these lovely verses from her. We don't hear a lot about Elizabeth, but we get these beautiful uh, words from her in verse 25. She says... The Lord has done this for me. The Lord has done this for me. In these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. And we must remember that because she was childless, people perhaps thought less of her, and so she felt disgraced in front of her family and her community. And so this pregnancy, this very late life pregnancy, uh, speaks to her firstly of favor coming down from God to her. It speaks to her of the pregnancy itself within her body. And it also speaks about a reconciliation or a restoration, in a sense, of her position in society. And so we have this lovely cross in the way that Elizabeth describes her experience of now being pregnant. The scene then shifts quickly to Mary, and Mary also encounters the angel Gabriel, who tells her, in a sense, a similar kind of story, that she is going to give birth to a child, not named John, but a child named Jesus, and that he is going to be very great. And so he says in verse 32, the angel that is, 
He, that is Jesus, your son, will be great and we will call the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And it's a very different prophecy, isn't it? Because the prophecy that Zechariah got for John spoke about John as the one who would prepare the way for the Lord. And now Mary is getting a prophecy about Jesus to say, he is the Lord, this is, this is the one. So a very different kind of prophecy. But in a way that is reminiscent of Zechariah, Mary says, but how can this be? Not because I'm old and sterile, but because I'm young and a virgin. So in a sense, they both express the same amazement that, they, that, 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 that somebody is going to conceive and have a child. Uh, this time, the angel doesn't get cross with her, but explains to her how it will happen. And at the end of this passage, we get from Mary's mouth words that are again reminiscent of Elizabeth. She says in verse 38, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be to me fulfilled. Or rather, may your word to me be fulfilled. I am the Lord's servant. She relinquishes herself to the will of God and invites God to carry out his plan in her. It's why we continue to esteem Mary so highly. She symbolizes or epitomizes rather for us this willingness to give herself over to the will of the Lord, even though she doesn't understand, even though she's so young. Then we know that Elizabeth visits, uh, uh, or rather Mary visits Elizabeth. We know the story about Elizabeth's uh, baby jumping in her womb as uh, we think as, as John recognizes the Messiah Jesus uh, in Mary's womb. And so there's this connection between these two boys. And then we get the wonderful Magnificat of Mary uh, from verse 46 to verse 55. And it's interesting because this passage, this, uh, this song that Mary sings uh, about the baby that is to be born to her reads almost more like a political manifesto than a very religious song, and certainly doesn't read like something that would come out of the mouth of an innocent, naive little girl. She speaks about things like this. She says, He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. It's, 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 all, it's a manifesto. It's, it's quite reminiscent, in a sense, of Jesus' manifesto that he gives in a couple of chapters. It's a powerful passage that shows that Mary understands something of what Jesus will do as he follows in the footsteps of John to some degree. Eventually, Elizabeth gives birth to this child. Zechariah is still mute and unable to speak. The relatives and the neighbors all come and they gather around her to see this child. And they all want to call him Zechariah. Community takes over, as one does. And they want to call him Zechariah after his father. And Elizabeth speaks up and she says, no, he is to be called John. Elizabeth finds voice. She finds her voice. She was not there when Gabriel came. She did not hear Gabriel's message. So she is believing secondhand what Gabriel said to her husband Zechariah. And she speaks up on his behalf. She speaks out the will of the Lord. And the people don't want to believe her because she's just a woman. And so they go looking for Zechariah to ask him, what does he think? And of course, famously, he takes a piece of slate and he writes on it, his name is John. And as he writes that, his voice is unlocked and he is filled with the Holy Spirit. And we get the second song in Luke chapter 1, the song of Zechariah, where he speaks first of all about what Jesus will do in the first half of his song. Lovely, lovely words about salvation and mercy and rescuing. And then in verse 76, he turns his attention to his son, John. And I almost imagine him holding his son and speaking to him like this, because he says, And you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. 
for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him. And these are the exact same words that Gabriel had said to John earlier in this chapter. These were the words that the angel had said to him that Zechariah had doubted and had led him to become mute. He speaks out these words that John will be called a prophet of the Most High because he will go on before the Lord, that is before Jesus, to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of sins because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Wonderful words of prophecy that come out of the mouth of Zechariah as his, as his speech is restored to him because of his faithfulness. And in the very last verse of this chapter, verse 80, Luke writes, and the child grew, that's John, the child grew and became strong in the spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel, as the prophet John, who we learn about later. Now, I wanted to recap the story with you, even though it's probably familiar to you, because it speaks about the working together of faithful individuals in response to the call of the Lord to prepare the way for the coming Messiah. We have Zechariah and we have Elizabeth. We have Mary. We don't have Joseph. He's mentioned only in passing as being somebody to whom Mary is betrothed, but he doesn't appear as an actor. We have the two babies, and we have John leaping for joy as he encounters Jesus, both of them still unborn. We have the neighbors who come by and try to deviate Elizabeth and Zechariah from the prophecy that was given to them by the angel Gabriel. We have Zechariah speaking out in faith about the name of his son, and about his role in the world. And we have John himself, who's prophesied as being the one who will prepare the way for the Lord. And what I want you to recognize, friends, is that each person in the story has to play their role in order for the whole story to work out. If any one of them had failed to play their role, the storyline would have broken. I have no doubt that God would have found another way. But in the story as is presented to us, each person needed to play their role in order to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. And John didn't fall out of heaven onto earth as the prophet, like Mr. Bean drops down at the beginning of his, uh, of his series. John himself was prepared. There were people who prepared his way. The angel Gabriel, his father Zechariah, and his mother Elizabeth, and even the relatives and the, and the neighbors. All of them helped to prepare the way for the coming of John. And in a strange kind of way, even Jesus, unborn as he was and younger as he was, helped to prepare John for this ministry because it perhaps was in that moment when Mary and Elizabeth met and the two babies recognized each other that John, in a sense, took on the mantle of the prophet who would prepare. You and I are called to continue this work of preparing the way for the Lord. This is the commission that God gives to us. We might not be great prophets like John. <laughs> we might not be able to sing songs like Mary and Zechariah. We might not have the faith and the acceptance of Elizabeth. But each one of us, you and me, each of us is called to participate in preparing the way for the Lord. 
we do it in our own way. Sometimes it's a bit big and dramatic, sometimes it's really, really small and unobtrusive. But this is what we are called to do. It's what it means to be a disciple, to prepare the way for the Lord, to open up a highway for him, to right the wrongs of the world, to work for equity and justice and balance in the world, as Mary sings about in her song, to speak about forgiveness and mercy and salvation, as Zechariah speaks about. This is the opportunity that we have as believers and as followers of Jesus. We transform this world into the kingdom of God so that Jesus can come in and take up his inheritance. I am not the angel Gabriel, but I would love us all to listen to the words of Luke chapter 1 as if it were himself coming to speak to each one of us and commissioning us in the way that he did with Mary and Zechariah and John. May God bless you as you seek to work out your faith in the way that you live your life in the world and in the way in which you prepare the way for the Messiah.